What is up everyone and welcome to episode 67 of the Party Chat Podcast, where two away. As always, I am your host Squiggy no, and no, not. I am joined by Salazo and Laura. Hello, guy and girl. Hello. No, no, I'm, I'm distancing myself from this already. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm, I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. It's great I'm... up until that intro. What, what is wrong with that intro? There was intro. nothing wrong with that intro. intro. I got oh, I'm, I'm glad you're so on board, Laura. You, you and Squiggy can hold the fort in two weeks. You know that's impossible. Well, we'll, <laughs> well, look, you know what? We'll schedule it around you, Laura. Episode 69 is going to be the best episode yet. But, for now, this yeah. <laughs> is episode 67. And this is the Party Chat Podcast, brought to you every Wednesday by Retro Mustard. You can find us on iTunes and all other podcasts and services. And we post at RetroMustard.com, 9am every Wednesday. And we post on YouTube... At some point during the week. I think the last two weeks have sort of been, like, on time. I yeah, think. they have. They've actually been really dead on. Yeah. Like, I think the last one was, like, two minutes past nine or something. So I'm, I'm getting better. This is where this week's, like, it's just a mess and it goes out. The, 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 the more in the morning than my, my shows are. <laughs> Mine don't go live to, like, half ten. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah, I've, I've noticed that. I get the notification pop over my phone. Yeah. But, yeah. But no, so yeah, 9 o'clock, hopefully. 9 o'clock on iTunes, anyway. And then sometime in the morning on YouTube. But we're there. If you subscribe to us on YouTube, you'll get a little notification when it posts. So you're not going to miss out. It's pretty straightforward, really. Um, Has anyone played anything this week that they want to talk about before we jump into the news? Anyone at all? Anything? I mean, I... yeah, I was playing some Infinite Warfare earlier today. You were? I have, I have some free time. I was. I played a couple of hours of it. So got through the first couple of missions... Got frustrated at trying to kill the first giant robot. Is that right at the start where you've got the big gun? Yeah, because yeah. I mistakenly went, oh, I've got a big gun now. I'm going to hide in this room because the robot can't kill me in there. And did it that. just throws a grenade and you die. Yep, did that. <laughs> yeah. So eventually I went, oh, silly me. I have to run around in the open and hide behind crates it can look over. Yeah. That's how you kill it. Pretty much I did exactly <laughs> the same thing. Um, I was actually just oh, editing yeah. that video because that's going to go up on my YouTube channel. Oh wow, that's twinky dink. Later on. So I was editing that. It's actually uploaded at the minute. And I remember dying because I hid in the room to the left. Yeah. And then I... that's where you reload the gun. Yeah. So it's like, but this must there's... be where you hide. And then you can reload on the other side as well, which I didn't realise. So oh. I think I died twice in that little place and then had to move across. Oh, you like... did bet I don't like five or six times. Yeah, and I know I'm how not... you feel though. I'm... And I'm then, not... as in later missions, I after like I ran and got killed by an enemy I couldn't see because everyone looks the same i just went i'm just gonna shoot anything that moves yeah. and wow no, no, if I've, they're on my side they'll survive There's a lot of um a lot of the robots look sort of yeah. the same as your I'm robots. just shooting a robot yeah. so like oh there's a guy i'll shoot oh he's got blue text now i'll move on yeah shoot yeah i've else. done that a few times like not shot not shot a robot because i thought they were mine yeah. for them to turn around and shoot me and I'm like, I'm on your team, I'm on your team. And then I realise when a little yeah. red thing pops over them when I'm shooting, it's like, maybe I should have shot you earlier. Well, that's why I'm happy there's, like, a couple of the guns have, like, that yellow scan on the front. Yeah, and then that's, that's lights up who the bad guys are. And I'm yeah. like, brilliant, now I know who I'm meant to shoot. Yeah, I think I use that on pretty much every mission, because obviously, you know how you can select your loadouts? Well, I won't have recommended the first time, yeah. but I'll probably just a bit... Like one with the yellow sky. Yeah, Although it annoys me. Enough. The first mission, you get to choose all that loadout, and you go, yeah. And then, like a third of the way through, you get blown into space, so you lose every weapon yep. you had. And it's like, thanks. Yep. <laughs> I know exactly that part as well. But yeah, actually, I finished uh, the Infinite Warfare campaign this week. Yeah, you're, um, you're further ahead. Of, I think yeah. I've only done like the first proper. I mission. love how you said hesitant. Like, you're oh no, I've done two. You should I've know whether he's ahead of you when he's finished it. Have yeah. you finished it? No. Well, you're further ahead. No, it's 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 good. Like. It gets. I think it gets better as it goes on, and I think the story is really good throughout this one. I, I've, oh, really... no, I've, I've switched off during the story. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of switch. I kind of switch off at some points and then switch back on again. But I've kind of got an idea. I've kind of got an idea of how the whole thing goes. And I mean, that's a great side of a good, really in-depth story when you can switch off and then. No, but it's, but it's not just one of them where like you can just pick up. Yeah, you can just pick up the story. But it, it's yeah. it's good. I liked something in the ending, which I won't spoil for you. But it's quite. It's really well done. 
I really I'm, enjoyed I'm laying, it. I'm playing bets on the robot dies in the final mission. I really oh my god, the... what? I haven't even played this. I've not even attached this robot, but even I'm thinking, I'm not, I don't want it the to The robot's die. the quirky personality. It's Ethan, the dog. Oh, is Ethan, it? The robot. dog Ethan's of this so, game. So, cool. so I'm like, you're Ethan. dead. You're the going to die. Um, the dog didn't mission. die, though, before. Did it not? No, no, it didn't. They couldn't everyone, kill a dog. No, everyone, oh, okay. yeah, everyone was like, when you saw the dog in the trailer, the dog was going to die. The pleasant surprise is the dog gets wounded, like holds it poor, but you rescue it and then it's fine. Yeah. Oh, it's like... Um, like they, they swerved it. They swerved it. Um, I am Legend. Oh, yeah. oh the, I am the, Legend. The dog died. <laughs> Spoilers. World, the World War One game on Valiant PS4. Hearts. That's it. Valiant Hearts. Yeah. I've got you. Don't you worry. I've got you. Thanks. I love Valiant Hearts. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's and Pokemon. But that's my gameplay for this week. Cool. Laura, you played any anything this um, week? I did a little bit of Dead Rising Four because. Nothing says relaxes me like killing zombies in a fun way. I really do love Dead Rising. I really do love Dead Rising. I'm never. I'm so relaxed on Dead Rising Four. If I'm stressed out or someone's annoyed me, I will be on Dead Rising Four. It's always. You seem to be on Dead Rising Four a lot. A lot of people annoy me. <laughs> a lot of people just oh, irk my goat. Right. Um. Since Dead Rising Four, I'm near the end of the main story, so I'm taking my time doing the side quests and stuff like that. I think I'm basically finding out what the cause is and all that stuff. You know. I'm paying attention. It's divided up into cases and bite size, so it's easy to follow. Um, There's and no uh, like time restrictions in DR4. No, no. I think after you finished all four cases, you probably reset and you can just, you know, start again okay. and kill some stuff. But, like, you can... I don't... Yeah. Anyway, not the point. Uh, Forza is also what I've been playing because that's a beautiful game. Horizon 3. Yeah, I uh, do. And what I've played of Forza, I've enjoyed. It's, it's a good. beautiful racing game. It's a pure racing game. There's not much else to say about Forza. Do you want to go racing? You want to? You got an Xbox One? You want a racer? Yeah. Forza do you like racing? Do you like uh, Australia? Do you have an Xbox well, I One? I don't. I don't think you need to like Australia. It's like not like I've been to Australia. I'm like, you know I, what? I, like, do you know what? It's like, walking like bit, walking down I love the, the Australian accent as well. So this game's just made for me. I I do love the Australian accent as well. I'm kind of in part. Uh, it's like it's because you obviously can pick your character. So I said my name's like, good eye, Jonathan, and I'm like, oh yes, this is great. This is like being in Australia. Sorry, that was so an like, awful Australian like, question accent. Question for you then, Laura, as Hi. as as the one who's played Forza Horizon be the most better or worse than Burnout Paradise? Ooh. Ooh, um, hard. Uh, I'd say I still say worse at this point, but just because I haven't been able to, I've been online with people, but I haven't had a big ah, group right. of people. Okay. So, no, I'm with you. So, yeah, no. so I feel like I've probably a lot of memories from way back when. Whereas, with all the people, yeah. um, I yeah. played online with like three people at one time. Um, Squiggy, fair enough. Didn't join because he hadn't got to the online bit yet. Yeah, well, I won't um, be joining you for a while now. Oh, my Xbox Live's like... run out. Has it? Yeah. Oh, that's... I'm never. I'm only had out. money. Um. Anyway, I don't anyway, anymore. He bought an action. <laughs> not the point of this podcast. Anyway, <laughs> if I um played with more people online, they had some fun games. Like I played a game of like uh, it's basically infection with cars. That was quite fun. If there was more people, sweet. It'd be great. Yeah. I think it's called King or something. It's something you've got to be the king. So you basically have to tag the other car, become king, and then to get king again, you tag it, and it's the person with the longest time after a certain time of year. Oh, okay. Quite it's good. kind of like stuff that was in um, Project Gotham. Yeah, yeah, I was about to pretty, say it sounds a bit much. like P- was it PGR4? PGR4, yeah. 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 There's stuff like that, but it's like a instead of it being like a race, it's like a open open area, if you know what I mean, like a designated area that's quite large. Like it was an airport strip. Of, you know, so you had oh, okay. stuff to go through. So it's like that. It's like a battle zone. I was going to call it like a battle zone, then you know what I mean. But um, yeah, if I um, played with more people, it probably would leapfrog Burnout Paradise because it's definitely, obviously, graphically more impressive, obviously. Um, and it does seem kind of bigger and more to do. But I maybe I haven't had as much fun as I had with the multiplayer Burnout Paradise, so I don't want to. Yeah, I love I love Burnout Paradise multiplayer, but I could I could see Forza like going that way. But again, like you said, we need like. And I think I need. To, I think I need to spend time playing online with people as well. Yeah, I think that's what put Burnout Paradise above the air. It's just the fact you had fun on it and everything like that. I don't. I think technically, obviously, Forza is kicking its butt, but yeah. you can't really put a price on fun. Yeah, on no, definitely. Yeah. Well, what have I been playing? Oh, I played a bit more Twilight Princess, HD. Finally. Oh man! Yeah, finally. Oh, you sent me pictures of that because I remember I was going to tweet back a picture of a ladder, but I couldn't find a ladder. I, <laughs> I had well, no paper next to me. Well, so. what, what, what did I struggle at this time? I struggled at something. What was it? Oh, bloody controlling the stupid donkey. It's not donkey. Uh, the horse. Pona. Pona. Bloody controlling that. The amount of times I've just like 
thought I was going in a straight line. Next thing I'm hitting a wall and I stop. The donkey. It it feels like a donk. It handles like a donkey. <laughs> but no, um, I've finished the um, the forest temple. I think it's the first one in Twilight yes. Princess. I'm not. I'm literally not not that far. I've finished the forest temple and I've just made it to the Goron. Is it the Goron Mountains? Yeah, I think... maybe I can't remember off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah, I'm not even saying, but I think you're right. I think it's like I've made it. I've sort of done the bits before that, so now I'm heading back to there. Goron's usually the second lot, so <laughs> I think it's yeah. I think because you've got to get the boots from the mayor of the original village, the le- the lead boots. I think it's been it's a decade, so, so I'm just going to so. nod. You yeah, are. Oh, yeah. if, if you can't remember it, then I won't. Yeah. I won't go into where I am. But I'm only about probably five hours into the game, maybe. So I'm not. I'm not massively far in, but I'm enjoying it. It's. Like, apart from Wind Waker, I don't think I've played, like, a Zelda game recently, if that makes sense. So, like, I played Ocarina probably back on the N64 and same with Majora's Mask, but then I didn't really play... Like, I played Wind Waker on the GameCube, but not fully, Okay. if that makes sense. So this is sort of the first game, Zelda game, for a while that I've played. It's, like, different to Wind Waker. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. And I hopefully I'll get it finished before the Switch comes out. That's my plan. That's my goal. Two no less than two months, like yeah. five six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be finished, and then I've got I've got Wind Waker HD to finish as well. <laughs> I say finish. I've got Wind Waker HD to start. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I have a story. I, 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 I have say a story this. I have that. like a Wii U library of games to start. Yeah. But... I have a reason behind that though. That's because okay. the download you... took so bloody long. Ah. Uh, oh right, you were modern download... game modern gaming problems. Yeah. Because I've, right? I've got the um, Zelda edition of the Wii U. So right, and it, it, oh, but it took it took so long to download that when I like I wanted to play it, it was still downloading. And by the time it downloaded, I, I was playing other games. So I sort of like it went on the back burner. So I've not got to that yet, but I'll get to it eventually, and you'll hear about it here. But anyway, has anyone got anything else they want to talk about game wise that they've played? No, nope. Um, nope. I think I'm good. I think I'm good, good, good. So we'll jump straight into the news, and I have four, five, five items ish on my list. Uh, we'll save the big one till last, if you class it as a big one. Uh, first one is I'm to do... I'm so concerned. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, didn't even, I couldn't even name one news story before this podcast started, and you're like, I've got five. When did that happen? Well, you'll look forward to these. So, um, you're about okay. to learn, Laura. <laughs> I'm about to learn, yeah. Yeah, so basically, uh, Overwatch is getting some China, Chinese New Year stuff. So this was leaked earlier on last week, but then the Overwatch uh, Twitter account actually tweeted out a sort of a little video with with my is it my May? Is that it is me? a character in Overwatch. Yeah, yes. basically with her in a Chinese New Year outfit, basically saying good luck and great fortune await, and telling you when it starts. So that starts on January the twenty fourth, which is the day before this podcast goes live. So it is live she, already. She's yesterday. Why aren't you already playing Overwatch? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're talking about <laughs> what's own old news. You don't own Ew. Overwatch. You're missing out. Thanks. But um, yeah. So this this Chinese New Year sort of. What's this malarkey, like, where's it come what... from, eh? Yeah, well, it, the content arrives on January 24th, and it has new skins for some players. The skins for Winston, Reinhardt, Zenyatta, Roadhog, and stuff like that. I'm assuming the skins for everyone, you'd assume. There's, there's usually not skins for everyone. No, well, they seem to be listing a lot of them, from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, no, it looks cool. I don't think it's going to be as good as the winter, the winter one. And I think they just added a new map not that long ago. Yeah, they did this, so there's not going to be... There's yeah, probably not going to be yeah. any new maps or anything. The maps are kind of separate from these updates. These tend to be more cosmetic things yeah. when they do this. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's out. I'll probably, I'll probably make us jump back in, because I always seem to like... I like getting the loot boxes when they're the special edition loot boxes, like the Christmas one, the Halloween one. Because you get two for the price of one. Yeah. That's the thing, so I'll probably hey. jump back in. Jump back in there. Yeah. Um, are you gonna are you gonna play a bit of it? Maybe it depends who's online and playing it. Me and you can play it, Slazer. Can? Yeah. We need to think of a day that starts with an O, so we can have like something even in Overwatch instead of Saturday morning switch. No. Oh, I just yeah. Like, he's, tra- he's, tra- he's trying to be. He's trying yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Move okay. on. I'll play by myself then. You story number two. Story number two. <laughs> story number two is something that I want to do right now, and it's Run. Uh, Super Mario Run is coming out on Android in March. Oh, I did hear this. I wasn't living under. A... I did see all this on uh, Facebook. Um, yeah, I was really enthusiastic for the Android users to finally 
get on board with this beautiful game that divides the community. Yep. Yeah, there's not really much else to say. Um, it's out in March. You can pre-register on the Google Play Store to be notified when it launches. When did um, the iOS one come out? The end of last year or the start of this year? December. December. Now, see, that's quite a quick turnaround for Android users. Get it? That's all I was going to com- comment on. It. Like, it does seem like they have got to Android quite fast because a lot of stuff seems to take ages. No, a lot of games normally just come out on both at the same time. To be fair. No, yeah. I mean the the big releases don't. I swear, me and Pokemon Go did. did. Yeah, well, mm, that's Fire nice. Emblem is. Is it? I didn't know. That's mm-hmm. No, Fire Emblem has come out on Android first. Nah, I looked into it. It's the same. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, um, <laughs> I'd be interested to see if it has the same like uh, oh, you know. See, I don't. Trend. I don't. I don't believe you there, Slazer. Because I've just okay. had a quick search, and I don't think that's right. Hey, he's I... on my sword. No, shut up, Lord. <laughs> Sorry, go on. Run. Go oh, on, Super Mario Run while Slays or Google's out, the other thing. It'd be interesting to see if uh, Super Mario Run arriving on Android has the same effect, because on iOS there was quite a bit of buzz on it, you know, and it was a trending topic, so it'd be nice to see if it gets a little bit of a renewed conversation in its community by appearing on Android. Because you don't hear, it's not like Pokemon Go, you don't hear everyone talking about it, mainly because you have to pay for it and stuff, and it's like, everyone spoke about it for a week, and then I haven't really seen it take over people's lives like Pokemon Go did, so. That's all I had to say on Super Mario Run. <laughs> sorry, for, sorry for staying on topic. I really apologise. Well, uh, it's okay. You you stay on topic, Laura. Um, so yeah, I'll be. I'm. Do you know what? I'm more interested to see what the price is going to be, because it's seven ninety nine on the App Store, but with Apple pushing the prices up. Do you know how like how Brexit's like apparently affected the prices, and apparently it's going to increase to nine ninety nine on the iOS Store. I'll be interested to see what it launches as on Google Play. Like, is it going to be seven ninety nine or is it going to be like a tenner? And I think if it's a tenner, it might put some people off buying it compared to like seven ninety nine. I mean, I can't see why they would price it differently. No, but like, apparently the rumor is that all Apple store like prices are going to be pushed up as well. So like, Mario Run uh, is going to be nine ninety nine at some that's... point seems really not a good idea unless they're adding more content so yeah that's what i mean like is it going to be 7.99 or is it going to be 9.99 to match the price when it rises so i mean thing. as i said if they add another world yeah i, I, don't, I think it's sense, just literally but... a straight a straight thing uh, that's never usually a good idea <laughs> yeah anyway um next news story is about micro machines so micro oh machines is returning to Xbox oh my One, God. PC, and PS4 in April. Oh my God! Did you do you know what, Slizer? That was my exact same reaction. I'm so happy. I, <laughs> I am properly excited. I, think, I, I I haven't played one since the N64. That one, is the exact but, oh same one Jesus. that I played, and I loved it. It was so. I'll much tell fun. you how much I love that game. Like for some reason, the copy of the car I got. Never was in English. It was it was in some language. Couldn't tell you what. I had no clue how to change it because the menus were confusing as hell because you drove the car around them. But I didn't care. And like, I used the memory pack and I never knew if that worked at all or anything. <laughs> but I couldn't care less because I had amazing fun playing that game. I loved it. Like, do you know what the first thing I did when I, after I watched the trailer for this Micro Machines? I went on YouTube right. and I typed in Micro Machines N64 and I started watching a bit of it. <laughs> and I was like, this looks so bad, but it was so much fun playing it back in the day. Wee, 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 it was wee, amazing. Wee. Like, basically, I remember mm-hmm. one, I was watching one of the races around one of the tracks and it was a pool table. Yeah, and I remember it like I remember it perfectly. I played it that much. <laughs> I loved it. Like I can't wait for this to come back. I am. I've never been this excited about like a game that's not that you would you know what I mean. It's not a triple A yeah. title for this like for as long as I can remember. Like I'm so excited for this. Like it's properly, just, it's so different as racing go. Like there's so many races that are exactly the same, and then Micro Shoots is its own little crazy thing. Yeah, and I hope brilliant. I hope it's still top down though. Like, yeah, the old one. That's my only thing. I hope they don't go. Back to the oh well, no, not top back, down. Hope they don't go to the, it, yeah, because so. there was a game on um, P. It was not PS4. Was it PS2? I think it was. I can't remember what it was called, and it was a little bit like Micro Machines. And I remember playing it, and I loved it. But it sort of was a mix of top down and sort of sitting behind the car view, and it was fun. And it was sort no. of my Micro Machines fix, but I can't remember the name of it. The only thing I played kind of well, it wasn't like Micro Machines, but it was a top-down racer. Since was a Kirby Air Ride, which had a top-down mode. It definitely wasn't that on PS2. But it wasn't that, yeah. <laughs> I love the fact you'd be like, "Wait, was it a PS2 I was playing?" 
<laughs> I'm gonna. Tr- I will try and find it, but I am like properly excited for this. Have you played Micro Machine? Oh, Mashed. It was called Mashed. Oh, there you go. I have heard of that. I've not played. Yeah, it, I mean, it got like it got good reviews back in the day, and I remember playing it, and it was it was basically like Micro Machines. And it was so yeah. much fun. So I've like, apart from the N sixty four one, that's my last experience of a micro machine style game. I'm so excited! April the twenty first. So I, excited! I, I, I'm actually yeah. What about you, Laura? Are you you in on the micro machine hype? Um, leave me out of this conversation. I don't get what's going on. <laughs> what micro machine? I've got nothing. I have no memories of whatever you're on about. And I was when people announced it. I saw people. I did see this announcement as well. And I saw a few people going, oh my god, that's amazing. And I'm like, I don't even know what's happening. I'm, I'm ridiculously excited. But, you know, this actually sums up something for me. Someone who, like, someone from work who doesn't, like, play games anymore, they used to play this back in the day. Like, they've they've not played a game probably since then. And they don't really know games that well, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And they were like, oh, have you seen the Micro Machines is coming out? And this is before I'd seen the trailer. And I was like, What? What? And like they were sort of as excited as me, and they don't play games. That's how good Micro Machines was back in the day. It's gonna be amazing. I honestly thought you were gonna say the very best. And he's like, that's no, same. that's reserved for Pokemon. I am the only one thing is I'm disappointed it's not coming out on the Switch. Well, I, mean, really I mean, you don't know you're... if it still might happen. It's not like yeah, true. Because that would be quite that would be quite cool just to play like on the go. As well, that's my only little disappointment. Okay, yeah. But I'm, I'm definitely, I'll definitely be getting it for, well, probably P- either PS4 or Xbox. And to be fair, I probably would have bought it for PS4 or Xbox anyway, because of the <laughs> multiplayer. But it's like it's just one of them where it would be nice to see it coming to the Switch, like a, a game that a lot of people are excited for coming to the Switch, a third party game. But you're getting Binding of Isaac. It's enough, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's not even that's not even in my news items, but yeah. Oh dear. Um, and speaking of Nintendo, uh, the last news item is that Zelda Breath of the Wild is going to be Nintendo's last game for the Wii U, which kind of expected. Shock, horror, uh, gas. Yeah. But this it, is so unexpected. I did. Zelda not know. closes out a platform again. I know, <laughs> and it's but that's, that's the thing. It's happened on was it GameCube. Twilight Princess. GameCube to Wii. Twilight that's Princess. Why it, yeah. It, it always ends the thing while opening the other one. And then didn't, like uh... didn't Skyward Sword come out for the Wii as well as the Wii U? Mm-hmm. Or was that just... No. Yes. No, it was no. Just... Oh, well. Yeah. It was Twilight Princess was on both the GameCube and the Wii. Because yes. Twilight Princess, I got on the Wii thinking, oh, I'll give this Zelda lock another go. Maybe I just didn't like the Nintendo 64 ones. Maybe I was just young and stupid. No, and, I still And you Zelda. picked the worst, the worst Zelda. I know. I realise that now, but I'd already, I'd already played the best Zeldas anyway, if you know what I mean. So... You played Wind Waker? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and or or in, or in, or in, why has it gone from my head? Orinoco of Time? Ocarina right? of That's Time. Right. Orinoco of Time. Orinoco's a river. Orinoco's a womble, isn't it? River of Time. No, it's a, it's a oh river. Orinoco's a womble. Oh it's also a river. It's also a womble. I think it's a river. It's definitely a womble. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Next time on the anyway. Chat podcast, watch out as Laura goes, Zelda's a girl. What? <laughs> no, I already had that when I was, I was way too... It's, an, it's a river in South America. It's one of the longest rivers, in case you wanted to know. <laughs> it's also oh. actually... Um, oh, yeah. It's also a um, city in Minnesota. Welcome to the Orinoco Chat podcast. <laughs> I'm just getting live information out there. People might want to know that. We're educating the masses on Orinoco as a Anyway, time. yeah, but I, I mean, I didn't like it enough to remember its name. I had it on, I had them on the six, Nintendo 64, and then, um, remember the Nintendo Stars, like the original program they had where you collected stars? Yes. Like, original. Yeah. I got the Zelda collection on GameCube. I had remember that. that. I remember yeah, that. that. Uh, I tried that. I didn't like it, and I'm, um, I mean, I'm just saying. Anyway, Zelda. I'm sure people out there love it. Yay, Zelda. Yeah, I, I think... Do not tweet me abuse. I'm sorry. If you want to tweet Laura that. abuse, no, tweet her no. at Laura Law. Can you imagine if you want to tweet Laura abuse because she doesn't like Zelda at Zelda Fan 100 or something? <laughs> Pure <laughs> like... Zelda rules. <laughs> Pure Zelda rules. But yeah, yeah. no. Um, yeah, so that was confirmed by um. Reggie. Um, that's the last Nintendo game. There's obviously still. I say there's still going to be some third-party games, but let's not let's not laugh. There's probably no more third-party games coming to Wii U. 
No, don't be that person. There's, there's probably, there's the, the um, I'll get Not back. Not yet, guys, say, stop is that, it. Is that, like, probably the last ever game to be released for <laughs> the Wii U? I don't think it... No, because there'll probably be digital downloads, but it might be the last physical. Yeah, that's it, what I was thinking. Nintendo, yeah, but there might be other... I mean, is there anything yearly that comes out? I just, don't dance. That, just dance. <laughs> <laughs> just dance. I forgot about that, actually. Yeah, just dance. Yeah. I forgot about that so, one. I love just dance. But yeah, so, I mean, I mean, it's no surprise. The last Wii U was produced in November, I think it was, or something like that. Yeah, it's it's dead. Even Nintendo accepted the, at least mine is alive. That's, all I, that's alive. all I care about. I've probably played it all these, fine, this yeah. past two weeks, and I've played it since ever. That's a weird, weird fact. But yeah. Okay, that's playing Zelda. Oh yeah, I know. The yeah. GameCube it's one. Just, it's still, it's still a weird fact. Well, it's yeah. not like you were going to play a new Zelda on the Wii U. Well, no. I was, you know, I was tempted to not buy a Switch and play the Zelda on the Wii U, and then I saw the comparisons between the Switch version and the Wii U version. Yeah, because this happened before with people between the GameCube and the Wii, didn't it? That's what, the GameCube the version was the better yeah. one. Oh. Yeah, I feel like I remember people going the GameCube was better, and I was like, well, it's too late now. But like the the differences look, I think they look quite big for a, for an open world game. The differences yeah. that are there are probably quite I mean, important to the game. That- Back then, it was a case of the GameCube one was better because it was designed for a GameCube controller, and obviously the controllers were world apart. But this yeah. time around, it's kind of the same-ish controller, so it makes just makes more sense to buy the Switch one. Yeah, like I think it was more draw distances and just sort of textures yeah. on things. And for a game where you're going to be spending a lot of time, where a lot like a lot of Zelda games are based on the world you're in. Well, think, this one more than most. Yeah, so. I think it's sort of like you, the best version is the Switch one because of that. I mean, you could probably still play the Wii U one, but. Once you've compared them, you can't really go back. That's what I think, anyway. Yeah, don't compare them if you want to save money. Yeah, if you want to save money, don't compare them. Don't don't Google, don't Google like Zelda Wii U and Switch comparisons. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be that buying is a Switch. really accurate to Google. It's not like you stumbled upon it. You've got. I really want comparison. Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, but yeah. So that's the last last game for the Wii U, and the Wii U has sold approximately thirteen point three six million units. Worldwide. Oh, worldwide. just just point zero one off. Is that worldwide? That's yes. that's worldwide, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not big. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's why I was like, is that by region? But <laughs> well, like... we'll we'll end the news with some more Nintendo stuff. So after the Switch presentation, uh, Nintendo announced there's going to be a Fire Emblem Direct on the 18th, I think it was. So yes, pretty much a week. It'll be a week ago. <laughs> I think I think it was the 18th. It feels like it was, um, and they announced there was a few things announced. There. I've got four sort of Fire Emblemly shizzle. Yeah. that's what I wrote. Four Fire Emblem shizzle things. Um, so Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia, 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 you Valentia, saw? Valentia. Honestly, oh, thought he was gonna Valentia. Mess up and say Valentia. Sorry, I was, I was I was trying yeah. to find my notes. Honestly, and that... thought he was gonna mess up and say Mordor. No, no, oh. I'm not that bad. Um, that comes out on 3DS on May the 19th and it is a modern remake of the second Fire Emblem game which came out on what consoles laser? I think that was SNES but I could be wrong it might be NES like it's an old franchise though so. yeah I didn't have a clue I was just asking you <laughs> um, uh, the new artwork looks cool if you've seen it especially when people it... go like here's, her, here's, this late, here's the heroine 20 years ago and here she is now she, she's a goddess now so. I love it when they do shit like that I do <laughs> Just saying, I'm not even have to be interested in the game. I just find it like, whoa, technology, man. I think I've seen bits of it. Like, I didn't. I was out, so I didn't watch it. And I've seen sort of bits of artwork, but I don't know which Fire Emblem game it's from, because obviously there's more announced, such as Fire Emblem continue, Warriors, continue. which is basically like Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, but set in the Fire Emblem yep. universe. That comes out yep. in 2017 on the new Nintendo 3DS and the Nintendo Switch. It's the Wait. third ever new Nintendo Switch. Oh my god, I need, I, I need to fill off my chair then. How did I miss that news that there's a new new? I know, when I saw that, it. I was like, wait, wait, the, 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 you mean that thing I bought has... Honestly, has a, has I would have ice. checked outside to see if it... Oh, it, is a, it has ice over, but we don't know the hell, so... Oh, awkward. Yeah, because I've just anyway. read that there, and I just thought it was coming out on 3DS. But then, yeah. like, new? No, new. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. But saying that, didn't, one, did Hy- but... didn't Hyrule Warriors come out on the 3DS, but that was on just any 3DS? It came out on the 3DS, but my god, you needed a new Nintendo That's 3DS. That's what I mean, to... like, it ran, it ran like... But it wasn't exclusive. You could, in theory. 
So, yeah, yeah. No. no, that's what it's I mean. Like it ran, it ran like proper. This one, balls this, this on the one 3DS. Okay. Yeah. So probably this is based on the feedback from the other one running like balls on the 3DS. They're just like we might as well just go exclusive. Probably yeah, but that's mm. quite cool. A new Beautiful. Fire Emblem game coming out to Switch as well, like in release year. That's quite good. I don't Fire know. I don't, know, I, I don't know whether to get it because I've never played a Fire Emblem game before. I wanted to get the last one where you had to choose which version you got. Is that like the three, ver- the three Fates. versions or whatever it was? The three version, because I, I know Co- Conquest? Fates. Uh, like Conquest, Conquest, Rebirth, and the other one. <laughs> the other one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other one was lesser known. I only count two. So I know there's three, but there was something about the third one. I think one. the third one was exclusive to the eShop or something yeah, like that. Something, it was something about it. I remember uh, it okay, it. right. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there, there were three of them. You could buy you can buy the normal like the faction A or faction B routes in town, like in the shops. You had to get either the special you had to get the special edition, which sold out instantly, if you wanted all three routes on one cartridge. Otherwise you get them for reduced prices off the eShop. And the third route, which kind of covers both factions, is only available on the eShop. Nice. Anyway, I was tempted by that and I'm gonna be honest, Squiggy, if you're tempted, go for the Nintendo Switch one and justify that purchase. Well, hey. but, but yeah, but then it's not a Fire this, Emblem game. It's a Warriors this is, game. Yeah, it's a Dynasty oh, Warriors oh, game. Oh, never mind. This ain't worth... You're not going to get any kind yeah. of, oh, that character, because you've not played them. Yeah, yeah. which well, is I the know, whole point of the game. game. The best I know the character. Is, it's Marth. I know him from Smash yeah, Brothers. Yeah, I know yeah, Marth. Like... Is it Marth, Roy, and... Is it Ike? Marth, Roy, Ike, um, Robin, and... Oh, that's, you know what it is? Oh. That's some of my favourite characters to use on Smash as well. I'm not going to lie to you, though. You can't be buying a Warriors game just because you're like, I recognise these guys from yeah. Super Smash. No, that's the thing. Like, I've, I want to I play mean, one. Can. So, If you like Dynasty Warriors, yes, you can. I do. I used to like yeah. Dynasty Warriors. Oh, I didn't know that. Carry on. I used to Sorry. love Dynasty Warriors. I used to be okay, obsessed with down. it back in the day. Anyway, right. um, the next Fire Emblem game is called Fire Emblem Heroes, which, according to this lovely type of from Slazo, is a mobile gacha game. <laughs> yeah. Which Slazo is going to explain. So, oh, you you have no clue what gacha is, do you? Oh, my nope. God. Okay, so this doesn't work because you've not played mobile games. See, oh, if, I I search for, if I search for Gacha, I get the Mexican okay. drug lord. So you know okay. how Gacha so. those things in mouths you get where you put 20p in, you twist it, and then you get a little ball pops out and you oh, get a figure. Yeah. inside the plastic ball. Yeah, those are Gachas, and that's essentially kind of the, the name that's used for this genre of game of mobiles, where you get like various little characters. They can be between one and five stars. They'll have different stats. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll get a rare one, but probably not if you're playing for free. But if you put money up, you might just get something better. And and that's Fire Emblem Heroes. It's it's get get your heroes, level them up. Hopefully get oh, our Yeah, so classic mobile game. But it is still Fire Emblem strategy and all that. It's yeah, just, that's cool. Just got it's the very mobile, element. mobile game. <laughs> yeah. I'm if you don't well. mind playing gachas, great. If you do, yeah. Yeah, well, to be fair, don't buy this, like, literally, don't do what it says on the tin. That's what it's going to do, so don't buy that. Yeah, well, because I didn't know what a gacha game is, I don't think it's for me. I honestly thought you were saying I've already bought it, and it's awful. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but you you barely know what a mobile game is. Well, there's that, I mean, there's that as well, which is a problem. It's not not an ooh, Laura, we didn't type podcast, we went, Scoogie, what mobile games have you played? Uh... Uh, (laughs) um, (laughs) Messages, Snapchat, Twitter... (laughs) Yeah. Um, again, if you like, if you know, it's good to see sort of them expanding out of mobile with like more franchises, and I'd be interested to see how this one goes because I, I, I don't know, if, like, if you agree, so, but I find Fire Emblem is more of like a niche title. Not anymore. For Nintendo, but that's what I mean. Like, is this going to have it's the like popularity? Fourth, it's like their fourth or fifth biggest now. So yeah, but like to me, it's still class. Is like it's not the it's not like a Zelda or a Mario. Or a Smash it's not a Zelda or a Mario, but it's in the next level now. Yeah, but that's, I'll be interested to see how that translates across to like a mobile, like a mobile like, audience. It's, it's probably good to Animal Crossing these days. Yeah, I'll be. It'll be interesting to see how that sells. I mean, it's not going to be Pokemon or Mario Run style success, but it's but... got a far greater chance for sustainability than the OS2 did. Yeah, because no, Mario Run is a one-time purchase, and Pokemon Go, there's not a lot of incentive to put money into it. Yeah. But no, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how like the reception of that game, and then see where Nintendo go from there for the launch more in a fire like a Fire Emblem. Even like I'm assuming you can up like Nintendo can just add on like expansions to this game. Yes, if they want to. Yeah, so they've got like yeah, yeah. So they've got like a a Fire Emblem sort of platform there. 
Yeah, if it's successful. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, that comes out in on February 2nd, Android and iOS. Yep. Which is in... It'll be a week, just over a week after this podcast goes live. Yep. There was some confusion at first because they just went, Android this day, iOS soon. Yeah, that's what I was saying before because I was just, I was yeah, reading like Yeah, I do it what you mean, but yeah. then like when I was researching the apparently after, shortly afterwards, they went, yeah, iOS on the same day. Yeah, I was reading an article that basically says, come to Android first and no date for iOS, and then you sent, you sent me across another place where they've just announced both both days. Yeah. So, Slazer was right. It pains me to say that Slazer was right. But, uh-huh. yeah, it still pains me to say that. Uh, finally, um, a new Fire Emblem game for Nintendo Switch was announced. A proper Fire Emblem game, not Warriors. And that's yeah. coming out in 2018. There was nothing shown, was there, for that? Not really. They just went, yep, yeah, the next Fire Emblem's in 2018. It's on Switch. Yeah. Okay, you can go home. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's where I jump in. Maybe. Uh, maybe we'll see. I, I, I mean I'm cool I'm down for it like yes we need more announcements of Switch games from Nintendo so yeah there you go there's another one <laughs> maybe yeah maybe I'll jump in next year for that one Fire Emblem might be my first four in the Fire Emblem series maybe we'll see maybe. Um, but yeah that's that sort of wrapped up their Fire Emblem stuff Um, yeah I, I didn't honestly expect like when they said there was going to be a director of Fire Emblem I sort of thought well how like how can you like how can you warrant a direct for it? But you know, four new Fire Emblem games there. It's yeah, it's good stuff. It's it good to see takes Nintendo. Some sort of, money. Yeah, no, but I'm, money. yeah, but I mean, I was like shocked that there was going to be four games announced. I thought maybe there'll be a Switch game showing off and maybe a 3DS game showing off. Well, we already knew the mobile one was coming. Yeah, so. but I didn't think like I suppose I didn't expect the launch date to be that soon for that, as well. That is that's fair. Yeah, I didn't expect. In fact, I didn't expect the 3DS one to be that soon either. It's like, goddamn. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I didn't expect it to be new Nintendo 3DS for Fire Emblem Warriors. Well, I did after Hyrule Warriors, but I didn't. I didn't expect sense. it to be on 3DS in the good I just thought that would be Switch. Yeah, so. <laughs> but no, that's good. Um, we'll move on to releases coming out this week. There's actually quite a few. Um, there's a new console coming out, the Glacier White PS4, which I think is the slim version, like the new. I assume it's the slim. Yeah. I don't think it's the Pro. It's probably not the Pro. It's definitely not the Pro, actually. And then there is Resident Evil 7 coming out. Yay! Squiggy, you're day one this, right, buddy? Right? If if I get the day wrong one. game in my Kingdom Hearts box. Day one. Yeah, yeah, day one, yeah. Um, next game is Kingdom Hearts 2.8, Final tra- Chapter Prologue, or whatever you want to call it. Final Chapter Prologue, back cover, the game before Kingdom Hearts 3. Yep, featuring such classics like Kingdom Hearts Zero Point Two and <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> is it Kingdom Hearts coded? I, I think it's Zero Point Two recoded and then Birth by, by Sleep, this, or is this, it Three Day? Sorry, this dream, this dream, this Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance. Okay, yeah, Three Day, yeah. Uh, Zero Point Two. I'm gonna get the full <laughs> list of these. Kingdom Hearts Two Point Eight Final Chapter Prologue. It has Kingdom Hearts Dream Dream Drop Distance HD. It yep. has Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage, which is takes place after Birth by Sleep. Birth by Sleep, yeah. And I think it uses all. It's going to basically be done in the Kingdom Hearts three engine, like basically. Right. Which you know, it's nice to see like a little sneak of what that's going to be like. Right. And then Kingdom Hearts X back cover, which is actually Kingdom Hearts coded, I think, which was the mobile game. Yes, I believe. Like I, I get this, confused with all this stuff. And this is all ready to get you just. Yeah, try that again. <laughs> and this is all to get you ready just in time for the next Kingdom Hearts games, which are one point five and two point five on PS4. Which I'll actually be getting. I'm not. See, I already, I bought them on PS3 and I've not played them yet. But if they're on PS4, that's more convenient. Well, well literally, the only reason I was keeping my PS3 was to finish off Kingdom Hearts Two HD. And then yeah. when they said it was coming to PS4, I was like, right, see you later, PS3. <laughs> and got rid of it so I'll be getting that whole set and I'll be getting this maybe not on launch because I don't really want to it's, I think it's a full price release isn't it which one 2.8 I imagine this one yeah and it. I don't really want to pay a full price for what is basically a remake and a little snippet of a game if that makes sense and another game yeah but when you think Kingdom Hearts <laughs> 1.5 and 2.5 was like I think they were 25 quid yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like, why do I want to pay 40 quid for this one? Fair enough, I know it's on the PS4, but. It's like. Mm. Because you're a Kingdom Hearts fan, Scriggy, and you can't deny your heritage. I am a Kingdom Hearts fan, but. I don't think I'm that big of a fan. 
I haven't played one. I haven't played a like a proper title since Kingdom Hearts 2. I've not played... Won't, won't nominate that for the top 50. <laughs> I've not played any of them apart from one, two. I've played a bit of Chain of Memories and that's it. You've not played Birth by Sleep? No, I've never played Birth by Sleep. Oh, man. It's like the best, it's the best not numbered one. Is that the one with Aqua, Venus and Thingy? Is it Venus? I know Aqua's in it, I can't remember the other things. I think that's who it is. Anyway, let's let's not carry on with this because we could talk about this for ages. This should have been the topic of the week. <laughs> um, next on the list Still of games... <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll stick with what we've got. Uh... Next on the list of games coming out this week is Yakuza 0. Yeah, 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 don't ask, don't ask me questions about Yakuza. Yakuza. This is this is one of those weeaboo franchises I've not actually played. So I'm, I've got it all downloaded, ready to play it. Oh it. shit, Laura's in on it, right? Take I'm away, not Laura. in on it. I know they have some new Japanese wrestlers, and I don't think it's that one. I think it's five, no six. Which Wait, Laura's got Laura's got it downloaded. No, the old Yakuza to oh, get the into the one. series. I was yeah, say. yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a couple of them downloaded, ready to get into it. But um, yeah, I don't really know much about what Zero is, other than. I'm just glad it's getting a European release because that's always a thing, apparently. But uh, other than that, mm, that's all I've got. I'm sorry. Well, thanks for sharing that, Laura. Um, okay. The next one You're is welcome. is the physical version of Abzu, which I think did it come out in sort of was it October last year? Sometime. Quite and it was that. done. And the sound design was done by the Journey guy. Yeah, Boston we forgot to tell, tell Slazer. Yeah, we got to tell Slazer, yeah we, forgot, well, we talked about that. Actually, about we forgot it. to tell Slazer, yeah. I can get pissy um, up, like, holy shit, that's awesome. Yeah, and you tweeted them, they tweeted you back, or they favoured your tweet. Yep. Yeah, um, Yeah, that comes out physical. Uh, Digimon World Next Order comes out this week. Yeah, Digimon, Digital oh, Monsters. monsters. Um, not much to say about that. And finally, Tales of Bizaria. <laughs> did I say that yep. right? You did, Tales yeah. of Bizaria. I talked about my thoughts on the demo last week, yeah. so... I'm still probably picking this up. Who knows how good it'll be. I'm kind of hit or miss with Tales games, but hey, the characters look fun, and I think I think this will probably be a better narrative than Zysteria did. So. I completely agree with you there, Slazer. Thank you. What's yeah. your favourite Tales game, Squiggy? Um, Kingdom Hearts, got it. Tales, Tales, of, <laughs> Tales of Beetle the Bard. Ah, oh, that, well played. That classic. Yeah. No, well played. Yeah. well played. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, that is news and releases coming out this week. Before we go into the topic of the week, we've got a couple of things to plug. Slazer's going to go first. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Yes, Slazer, yes. <laughs> yes, you are. I mean, you it's, it's the same plug as last week, kids. It's Saturday Morning Switch, now available on the Retro Master YouTube channel. Two whole episodes. You can check out the debut episode where I talked all about everything from the Switch event. And now this week's episode is a nice little short one on 1-2-Switch everything we know about it so far and whether I feel it's worth the asking price. Off oh, no. it when you say one two switch. Boom. Oh one two switch. One two switch. Yeah. That's kind of how they do it in the trailer. So. I know, but it just gets in my head. Yeah, I've not I mean, um I've not watched this one yet. It's on my list of things to watch. I will watch it soon. But I'm interested because one two switch I think we've probably got the same opinion on it that it looks fun. But is it substantial? It's. I think the conclusion I draw is that cur- as it is currently, no. But we don't know everything about it yet, so that could change. Yeah, but from what we know so far, it looks fun, but there's not. It's there's not enough there. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say this should have been the packing game. I think I say either packing or even like an equivalent to like PS Plus or something for Nintendo's online service of yeah. like. Subscribe to our online, get this game for free, which you can use to demo the Switch to all your friends and make them buy one and yeah. give us And money. you can milk a cow. I mean, uh, yeah, that's... I also showed someone that at work. It's yeah. It's a coin flip of whether they find it hilarious or look Good at cow. you like you're diseased. Thank, like thankf- I'm looking at you now. Thankfully they found it hilarious. Okay. Um, otherwise it could have been a very awkward day at work. Yeah. So that kind of get like I I I get why they did it, but unlike WarioWare, where it's like a two second bit of humor of oh, I'm sticking fingers up a nose. On this, it's like no, you're you're there for like thirty seconds, like awkwardly milking a cow. <laughs> for some, that's the longest they've ever lasted. I mean, um, yeah. What's the next plug, Laura? I don't know. Oh, oh, you want me to plug Ploipers article? Yes, because I don't where... know what it's about. It's about what he wants from the virtual console on the Nintendo Switch. What does he Everything. 
everything. Game well, you, gotta read, everything. you gotta read the article. He, he, <laughs> he does, he's no goal too low. He wants, uh, he just wants basically, and overall, he wants an improved virtual console, and he lists what he wants. He wants games from GameCubes, he wants cheaper prices, he wants. Um, I feel I feel the best one he made was he just wants what we've already got on the Wii U and 3DS to be there at day one, which makes sense because yeah. good yeah. old Nintendo and there ah oh, we're on a new console now we'll reset yeah, the virtual console yeah let's reset our progress <laughs> yeah it's like so... no guys no yeah, I'm actually I am quite interested to see what Nintendo do with the virtual console on Switch but. We Aren't we see. all? We shall see. <laughs> they have nothing to tell us at this moment in time, apparently. Exactly. That was what his article about, was like, there's nothing to say, and so he was surmising what he wants before yeah. they crush his dream. But yeah, give give that a read before the Nintendo Switch comes out, and maybe there'll be a follow-up article. Why Nintendo didn't uh, give me what I wanted? Sort of thing. Right, anyway, uh, has anyone got anything else to plug? I don't know, Squiggy, do mm, The Party Chat podcast? Pe- any video content coming from... Not at the minute. No, not at the minute. I might. I'm. I'm thinking of doing a like a Call of Duty Infinite Warfare campaign discussion, maybe. Like just me sort of talking about what I enjoyed and stuff like that. Maybe, but then I don't know whether to wait for you to finish it and we can do one together. Don't wait for me. Okay. Actually, yeah. Sorry. You've seen me playing yeah, games. Good point. Okay. If I yeah. finish it, it's a miracle. Yeah. So that that might be coming. So look out for that. Um. But yeah, not really. Nothing for me. Which brings us on to our topic of the week, which quite, you know, it's a nice segue because there's nothing for me for this topic either. So Resident Evil 7 coming out this week, nice horror genre game. So why don't we talk about the horror genre as a role? Favourite games and sort of why we like dislike or like horror games, maybe? And I can take, I, I, I want to start with my favourite horror game. Please I want to kick it because I'm not scared of it. Because that's what makes it a horror game, but it's not really a horror game. It's Until Dawn is my favourite because you know how I love heavy rain and decision making games and all that stuff so uh Until Dawn is my favourite and I have to say because we've discussed on here before that I'm I don't like jump scares I don't really think I should be putting this information publicly out there it seems like something people could use but um Until Dawn has a few jump scares uh but it's such a generally not a scary game no matter how hard it tries um just find it fun yeah that's my favourite horror game. It's one that doesn't scare me because I'm going to talk about another game in a, like, you know... So is it more like you're fine with, like, the horror atmosphere of, like, Until Yeah, Because it is, really... like... It's, it is a horror like, game. It's, it's, not... a horror, it's a horror movie parody, yeah. pretty yeah, much. Yeah, basically, you're, you're a group of young people. One of the one of you is in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it freaks me out that he's playing someone young because, like, it looks like him. It's like, dude, you're growing up. Um, and Hayden Pedatier, obviously, is in the same scene in the game. But, um... Yeah, it's basically movie, you know, the whole you shouldn't get separated, you know what I mean? Like, stuff you're like, oh, any idiot can survive a horror movie. And it gives you scenarios and choices and I mean, and everything. don't spit up back. Yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't Obviously, it forces back. you in the game to do <laughs> that. Don't don't go into the basement when it's dark and be like, oh. That's just like, that's just like life, like life Pretty story much, things, yeah. yeah. But, um, there is, the bit, I guess the best thing I like about it in terms of horror, horror elements, and I guess if I had more, um, sounds really weird, if I had more normal fears, because you know how it's normal to be, I mean it's a common fear, common, to be afraid of clowns and stuff, like you can like, the uh, game, there's, yes. I mean it's, it's quite I'm not afraid of them, I just hate them. They get, people get freaked out by them though, that's like a thing. I know, no, I'm with you. Yeah. I, yeah. I got but, freaked um, out by the one in Sherlock. I did get freaked out by that. I like that clown, I was like, ooh. No. Uh, not a point. Um, therapist, there's like a therapist bits in between who's talking at you and he's like trying to ask you questions and work out what you're scared of and that affects your game. So if you say you're like scared of clowns, then you know what I mean, there's a clown. <laughs> Which I is thought, a really cool I way. I thought they did the opposite where if you said you weren't scared of something, they didn't. Um, some, sometimes they do, they mixed it. It was blurry. Uh, so you right. couldn't play, you couldn't um You couldn't like, you couldn't the, pick the game. The ga- you couldn't pick yeah, what you've got in there. not a simple case of Sometimes there's like a bit where pick the pitch, you know, what? how do you feel when looking at this? And it tries to work out what you're responding to, like that. It's not as black and white to make it obvious, but there's stuff like, you know, do you like needles? Do you know what I mean? What's worse, needles or drought? You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. Which kind, if you're like really scared of death, that might creep you out if you had the lights off and you're home alone playing it. Like, oh, that's a weird question for this game to ask me. It's realistic graphics, but yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It's a, it is a really fun horror game. I, I find weird calling it horror because, I, like I said, I'm going to mention the game that I just can't get through because it's horror. Um, and Squiggy definitely knows all about not playing games because they're scary. Um, but yeah, Until Dawn's my favourite 
because you know not because it terrifies me it does everything but but it is a horror game I've, so, I've, yeah. I've played horror games before not many anyone else got a favourite one they've actually played anyone anyone well I, I feel I'm kind of kind of in a similar boat to you because my favourite horror inverted commas game is Resident Evil 4 which is yeah, the Resident not, Evil yeah, that we went horror man I think I've played a bit of that one you should I, I finished it, and the only thing scary is Ashley's voice. Is it Ashley? Yeah, Ashley's whiny little voice. I mean, no, there are a few actual like scary moments. Like, I didn't get any? Maybe because I wasn't as young when I played. It. I assume you were young when you played it, or younger, because I, I mean, played it like last year, the year before. So. <laughs> okay. But no, no, the one that gets to me is essentially uh, there's a moment in the game where you're going back through the village for the second time, and it's pitch black, and the only light you get is from thunderbolts and lightning. Very, very, very frightening. frightening. Yeah. And this is after, like, <laughs> earlier on, you've had the entire village chasing you... Entire village. Yeah, the entire population of the village chasing you around this place. So you're kind yeah. of familiar with it. You're also worried that people are going to jump out at you. And then the entire place is covered in bear traps. I just find... to really hammer I it home. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't find that scary. Because when you're describing it to me, it feels like something I should be scared of. But when I played it, I was kind of all right. I, I, just, I feel that was like because that's the thing like I'm not unlike you like jump scares scare yeah, crap like it, that not the thing. doesn't bother me because it's a very immediate kind of bang and like after a couple of times you're like yeah ha uh, ha uh, very very good <laughs> I, I hate wish I was scares. like that I'm just like shaking for the whole game <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's, it's like how uh, I've played a little bit of Five Nights at Freddy's and it's oh, like God. it's like you're sure there's like a, a jump but when you pull your monitor down it's like oh it's a bear and then it's like great I just don't care. Oh, you've done this like too many times. Why would I care? It just means I've lost. That's all this bear means. No. <laughs> but no, like whereas more atmospheric horror, like that scene in Resident Evil, gets to me. And then there's a bit where you go across the lake, and it's oh boy, and you can just see this thing moving around slowly. And you're like, it's going to come for me, isn't it? Please no. <laughs> Please I feel go. like I really missed out on this experience. I wish I played Resident Evil Four with Slay though. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we need to play. Bit. I don't think I played it all. I think I played bits of it. Or I saw people, or I saw bits of it being played, and I didn't think it was that scary from what I saw. But I might not have seen any scary bits. If yeah, that makes sense. I, well, I played some, the whole game. But didn't get it. There's a reason why I'm very explicitly describing a scene, and then there's another bit later on where you're fighting invisible enemies, and they scared the living bejesus out of me. I don't because... have invisible enemies. I, really oh, don't think... I don't know if I'm killing them. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I to judge any. I love the fact that was happening. I, oh. I should have been, had to run everywhere in yeah. a mad. I was kind of cool with that because I was like, I. Oh, okay. Oh. We're different people. Oh, jump scares! Just they're there. You can hear them, and it's like. Yeah, so I'm fine because I know they're there. If I didn't know they were there. For all I know, I'm gonna get hit. <laughs> Oh, see, I just assumed they were there, and I was cool. You really have a, fa- a fairly cautious playstyle of make sure everything's gone, but I can't do it, because I can't see them. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, I, I'm not cautious at all, really. Um, Spooky, favourite? Favourite? Uh, well, as as you all know, I'm not a big fan of horror games, but I do, like, it's weird. Like, I'm just going to, like like, take up my whole part of the topic now, like, everything about it. I don't know why I don't like horror games. Like, I don't... Do you like horror movies? No, I hate horror movies. I sometimes... Do you know if there's a trailer on for a horror movie? I sometimes mm-hmm. can't watch it. I'm going to be honest. I, You know what? I, the only horror movie... Tra- I love horror movie trailers, but I don't really go watch the films because I don't want to scream in public in case there's jump scares because there's a cheap pop. But um, there's a horror movie with my name in, and it really annoys me because the ad just randomly on Spotify is like, oh, that gets me. <laughs> that, other than that, I'm fine. No, it's like... But continue. I, I, I don't know. Sorry, sorry. sorry. But, <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I think it's... I think for me it's the fact that I kind of would rather... Like, horror games sort of have me on edge, if that makes sense. Like, oh, I know something's going to happen here, something's going to happen, something's going to happen. And I sort of, like, worry... And panic, like no, something... I have that. Yeah, like it, like but, you know something's gonna happen, yeah. and even when a jump scare comes up, and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm, I'm dead." Yeah. you've already so, worked yourself into a state. Yeah, so for me, like, I pref- I like to play games like to enjoy myself, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I don't get enjoyment from me basically pooing myself <laughs> while playing a horror game. And it's probably not as bad. I probably just make yeah. it up in my head that it's that bad. 
yeah. to appreciate I the that. atmosphere. Yeah, well, I, I, this, I this do. I do. Like, I, I don't play a lot of them, but uh, like it's kind of the appreciation of the atmosphere, and that even when in my head I'm like, I know a jump scare is coming, I know, there's still like a little bit of tension in my body. Yeah. yeah, I like the tension. I like the fact the game grabs my attention because I don't want to look away. Because I feel if I look away quickly, the smoke might jump at me. Whereas I look back and I'm like. Do you know what I mean? Or you hear a loud voice. Yeah. Well, that's, like, that's the thing. I, I love I don't, it. I, I don't like that. So in. I love it. I don't like it. So you, I mean, if you <laughs> think, around corners, love it. Like I've played my favorite horror game is Alien Isolation, and I yeah. absolutely love that game. It's one. Of, it was one of my favorite games of that. Beautiful year. sound work, isn't it? I love isn't it. I honestly love it. It's one of the creepiest games I've ever played, and I think the only reason I got like through playing it is because it's from a universe that I know. <laughs> so yeah. like I know like I know about Alien if that makes sense. So you felt kind of like a comfort blanket, being like I know what's going yeah, on, sort of thing. I like, know. Yeah. Do you know? Like, does that make sense? I do. That does make sense. Yeah. To me. yeah. And I mean, because... I spent I spent a lot of time crawling around the whole space station because <laughs> I was too scared of that alien coming anywhere near me. There's a few times oh. when I've played, I have I did like a little scream because the alien just dropped down out of nowhere. I think nowhere. I was in a party with you and you screamed because it scared me. Like I was Probably. scared of your scream yeah. and I was Probably. startled by you. But. I was like, Alien Isolation is so good. It's like I re- I honestly recommend everyone plays it, even if you don't like horror games, because I don't like them, and I've never had I've never enjoyed a horror game as much as that, obviously. But I think it was down to the fact that I know the universe, whereas sort of like Bioshock. The first time I played Bioshock, it's I wouldn't class it as a horror game. It's more atmospheric, but some yeah. of the some of the jump scares at the start, like they they didn't I didn't want to carry on playing it. That's fair. I mean, I'm glad I did because again, it's one of my favorite games of all time. But I, I mean, don't know what it is. Like, I think I, I think I could easily play Resident Evil Seven, but it's the fact I don't. The but no. It's the fact I that I don't. Resident want... Seven means more into horror than four, five, yeah, six. Yeah, but, it, but I mean, but it's like it's more the fact I you, don't you want to. Yourself. Yeah, because yeah, because I, yeah, yeah, I'm completely with you because I did that with PT. I didn't get through the PT demo because even though you're just walking through the corridor for the first bit, for some reason I convinced something was going to happen. I was like, I can't take this. I can't take the tension build. I just know something's going to shit. <laughs> yeah, screen. that's what I mean. So, like, that's the word. I didn't even find the PT demo that. Like, I, I, yeah, but it wasn't uh, that scary. I didn't even get to an, any scary bit. I was just terrified of jump scares. <laughs> I was just on. That's the thing. But like, I've I've been in like haunted houses and scary things before. And, mm. like, people come out and say, oh, I was really scared. And I was like, that wasn't scary. What are you on about? Yeah. So I don't know. Like, I honestly think I could play Resident Evil 7, <laughs> no problem. But it's, in my head, I make it worse than it is. Because it's I, I don't think science. horror game. Yeah. And straight away, like, I'm like, oh, no. Horror can be both, like, you can both, like, you can avoid horror like you do because, like, I don't want to feel like that. But at the same time, it can also be, like, a brilliant thing. Like, I mean, it's not related to games, but most people's favourite Doctor Who episode it's Blink, a horror episode. I love, I <gasps> love oh that episode God. so much. <laughs> exactly. I still, I still and like, that's one of the very exactly. few horror episodes of that show. But everyone still thinks, it's, everyone still puts it as their favourite. Because you there's no also... real emotional rush like that episode. You know what, yeah. to be fair, I know someone that gets creeped out by the, are you my mummy? Is that you? So, yeah, some people get me. like by no, that one. Me. Some people got freaked out by the shadows, but Blink is I, the general one. Squeaky, Blink. if it was me, I would have just shit scared myself by doing yeah. the voice. But Blink, yeah, yeah, like, that's, <laughs> thing, that's, that's what I mean. Like for me, I don't want to play horror games, but Blink is one of my favorite episodes. I've watched all the Resident Evil movies, and they're not really horror, but there's no, a few, they're fucking but, shit. but they are, but there are a few jump scares <laughs> in them as well, mm-hmm. and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, and like even the Alien movie, I watched the first Alien movie, which apparently is horror and really creepy. I laughed through most of it. I that was sci- I always call that sci-fi. It's like edge. sci-fi horror, and it's things. It's that's what I mean. It's like, it's weird. Um, and I do I want to play Resident Evil Seven. That's the worst. I'll tell you thing. what, you shouldn't play. Don't play Outlast. That is like the ultimate to me. That game. Well, you see, Outlast is in that kind of subject of horror where you're always being chased by. Yeah, something. I like, have nightmares about that game, and I've only played half an hour of it. Literally, I've been. Like, see, I. Downloaded not... it again for no reason. Don't know why I've downloaded it again, Slazo. I don't know what I'm planning on doing. I've not, I've not played it, but I have like seen it being played, and to me, oh. I'm like, this isn't like you're just being it... chased. This yeah, that's terrible. the thing. It's because it's chased, and I literally feel this game loves its jump. Like this is like the ultimate jump scare game. 
because you're like walking around with just a torch and you're like you know you're in the corridor like the first bit you're walking down that corridor and i'm like i, I sent something behind me i heard a door like i heard a door so you go in the room i'm like oh nothing you know i'll climb up into this vent and then i hear all this running and rustling like something's charging at me crawl a little inside i just poke my head out the vent and there's a monster now in the room where i stood like a second ago and it fucking terrified me and i thought it was gonna oh yeah just just generally and then there's stuff like um i was listening to someone who used to be on this podcast darren play it and he did this bit where it's all dark and he hid under the bed thinking he was safe and then he turned and it was under the bed with him and then there was a bit where he uh he checked the room again it was fine like the you know like the doors open against the wall yeah when he checked the room and it's fine and then he went to close the door and it was behind the door fucking terrified <laughs> Jenny wasn't even playing it it's like burning my brain <laughs> because I'm just terrified and I've, I've got it downloaded again because of Xbox Live Gold and it was free and I don't know why so yeah if I'm not here in a, I am actually not here in a podcast potentially I'm probably dying playing Outlast because that shit Terrifying. I think I've got that download on PS4 and Xbox One. I'm going to be honest, I actually did say to someone, like, can I come round your house and play it because I don't want to play alone. That's <laughs> literally what I did after. They were like, why? Is it scary? I was like, no, it's a fucking joyous game with unicorns. <laughs> fucking is it scary. Sorry. If they're listening to this podcast, I am so sorry. <laughs> Carry on. Doubt they are. But it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, horror games. Outlast. Ultimate one for me. <laughs> don't play it. Can't play it. Don't play, <laughs> won't play. <laughs> Got it down there I mean, just because I'm scared it might attack me. But don't yeah. I mean, I'm pl- I'm playing playing a horror VN at the moment called Sayonara, and like I don't know if like you recast that as the same thing because that is also kind of very atmospheric. Visual kind of. novel is kind of hard. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, to that's that, the thing because you can't really do like jump scares apart from like sometimes with music where it suddenly goes. <laughs> twang. <laughs> that would scare the shit out of me. That nearly did then. <laughs> twang. <laughs> But it does, like even in that part, like, there's some good things like being able to hear your heartbeat. And yeah. Like, very occasionally, like, you get movement on the screen, which I obviously in a visual novel, which is almost all still, so that's kind of a bit annoying. That would that's... creep me out. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's me throwing the PS. It's <laughs> just like visual novels dubbed. To be fair, you know what? It reminded me because you said VN, which made me think V. My mind went VR for some reason, even though I knew okay. visual novels. Um, that is probably the next step for horror games, isn't it? That's like gonna make them so. Now you see, I'm not too sure about where where the VR horror future because yes, you can do like really kind of intimate jump scares. You can be in I, the game. I, I think it's I too dangerous. I feel people, yeah, people are gonna go, oh god, and then fall and bang their head into something. So uh, you've actually, gotta be like, very careful. This is going about... completely off, like not off topic, but I was watching a TV yeah. show called Impractical Jokers. Oh my god, it's the two sisters, the three sisters bit. And the right? v- it's, he's in, he goes oh in, he puts god. the VR headset on, and he I ends up. To he, talk sit to on you a, about that. he sits on a stool, and he gets that scared. He falls off the stool with the VR headset on, and it's like he doesn't have a clue where he is because obviously the headset in the room. But yeah. it's like if someone's playing that in their living room or something, they could easily just like knock into the TV or fall over and something like that. And that's that's my issue because. I've got, un- I mean, I've got until dawn rush of blood, which I'm gonna sit down when I play it anyway. <laughs> that's on the rails, so I think you'll be fine. Yeah, but that's what I mean. But like, if I got scared then and like jumped, I, yeah. I could easily bang my head or something off, off something in my room. I I remember seeing that you're finally into impractical jokers. I was gonna tweet you about that. Yeah. Be like, oh my god, finally. We'll talk about that about. off the yeah, podcast. We're talking, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just starting. So yeah, the podcast, like don't I, worry. I can't see. V- like, I'd be interested to see how Resident Evil Seven. Like, I'd be interested to see if they can sort of collate stats of how many people played the whole game in vr and like how long people lasted in vr c- compared to like a normal thing if that makes sense i'd be quite yeah. interested in that because then i think i think if it takes off and it's really like popular and you know you've got even a 50 percent rate of people finishing it in vr then maybe sort of the likes of outlast 3 or something like that or until dawn like two it'll be all vr based but i can't see it because i do think it is too dangerous for people getting frights and scares yeah. and a I'm, lot of people I'm, i can see myself punching a wall yeah. because i do tend to jump like if like it depends if i'm doing it in like a like the impractical joker situation where they put the room around him but that's quite a big room and he could walk around yeah like if you know what i mean no but i mean like but uh, he falls off like a stool and loses his like yeah, bearings yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff yeah yeah if if I was even walking around the room, though, I'd be quite scared that I'd literally, like, you know, like, jump out and flail my arms, and I've smacked my arm into the radiator, and next thing yeah. I know, I'm like, I'm on the floor, like, oh my god, I'm in so much pain. Yeah, I'm I mean, so scared, and I was, so much I was pain. playing just a, like, not not even hard, I was playing a football head and game, and I lost oh, where I... Oh, I the one, headmaster! I, yeah, and I lost where I was in the room, and I headbutted my wardrobe, 
<laughs> and it's like, but imagine if I lose where I am and like oh go to god. move out the way, and the next thing I know, I've dived into my wardrobe or something oh like that. Oh my god, that is actually the greatest thing. And it could be like quite oh. dangerous, but I I can't see it taking off. Let's end the topic of the week there, and move on to the top fifty. So, oh. last week we put the forty ninth game into our top fifty list. That we did. That we did, and this time it is Slazo's turn to nominate a game for the top fifty. But this has a little. It's a, quite important this one, Slazer, because this is the fiftieth game in our top fifty. And what's going to happen is after this, if this goes in anyway, which Slazer's <laughs> quite confident. Wow, it will. I was wait, got this all formalised and everything set up. I haven't really. I'm just sort of going along. You're making this up as you go along. Got yeah. it. Right. But what's going to happen is from if this becomes the fiftieth game, we're going to sort of go through it on up. the next few podcasts and try and take out some games and replace them with other games we think should be in there. I think that's fair. I will finally get my dreams to come Slazer's true. Slazer's not having a full top 50 list. <laughs> um, so yeah, Slazer, take it away for our 50th game. So here we are, boys and girls. The, the streak versus the top 50. Can I get the last one in? Well, so as you may know, I've been a fan of picking games from genres that we don't really have represented in the top 50. And if you were thinking that we've run out of them, nope. I feel like we have. No, you haven't, mate. So uh, this time around, I'm picking a game that kind of both transcends its own genre and is probably one of the most popular mobile games. Okay, not just mobile, but like kind of... I'm trying to think of the way to phrase it. Like, it was popular on mobile, but it didn't originate on mobile. But uh, anyway. Oh, you're doing well, yes, Lazo. It's not a good start. I know, right? Well, I haven't even said what the game is yet. I know. So I have decided to pick the king of the tower defense genre. And that would be Plants vs. Zombies. This is easily the most successful tower defense game ever made. It's come out on a bazillion different platforms over the years, from PC to mobile devices. It's been on Xbox, PlayStation, it was on the Nintendo DS, apparently it was on the Vita, I didn't even know that one. It manages to do a good job of kind of making the tower defense formula accessible to everyone who plays it, so you, like, just... You get to plant cute little plants in rows. It starts off very simple. PopCap did a good job of kind of easing people in and then immediately starting to flip it on its head because after the first levels, it's like, okay, now have some more lanes. Now have zombies with shields and traffic cones for heads. Now have a pool. Now have a rooftop with flying zombies. And it kind of worked really well in ensuring that everyone, which is why Plants vs. Zombies is one of the games that, like, you could probably walk up to people on the street and say, have you heard of Plants for Zombies? And they'd probably say yes. And then, obviously, you had the song, which everyone loves, the There's a zombie on your lawn. And all of that, which, again, became a hit. And, like, the franchise did so well that it got sequels. You got an entire spin-off in Garden Warfare because of the charm of the franchise and the zombies and all the plants. It... And yeah, oh, and then there's the uh, the greenhouse kind of stuff, which allowed people to kind of put their own spin on the plants they were making. And it really just did offer a lot for the tower defense genre, the kind of other things. Like, I know there's been other popular things like Bloons, for example. A lot of people might have played Bloons in your Flash browser or something over the time. But I feel Plants vs. Zombies was kind of, I would argue, PopCap's finest game mm-hmm. and the best tower defense game that's come out. And for those reasons, and for the fact it is such a huge, ginormous hit, I think Plants vs. Zombies should wrap up the top 50. Interesting. Interesting. Have um, you played Plants vs. Zombies? Because I know we chatted about this before the podcast. No, I have not. No, and the only one I've played is the... You have not! The only one I've played is the, the first-person shooter one. Oh my god. Now, How are you on this podcast? Because we're desperate. <laughs> because Laura's on the phone. I'm not on the phone. Um, so, oh my like, God. this is. I, I understand a tower defense game. And I'm would glad you, you did that. Would you class <laughs> Space Invaders as a tower defense game? No. No. It's a schmuck. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because I would still class. I would still kind of class that as a tower defense game ish. Not laying. You're not laying towers. It's not anything to but do you're with defe- tower. But you're defending your base. That's not what tower defense is. Tower defense is you lay towers to defend the point. But you are but defending your point, no, no, just doing a different thing. No, that's, that's just my shmup. shoot aliens. It's a shmup. Okay, they're completely different. Okay, you go with that, uh, Laura. You got anything to add? Well, I'm kind of surprised by your choice. I mean, what I am as well. 
Like, I was kind of like... I, I don't know. It's a really odd choice because it's not something I obviously see touted one of those games i hate people in this podcast and um everything but um, don't hit today, so you nominate i don't know the game. i i find it interesting because i i kind of get like the pop culture thing because i like obviously like garden warfare you know like obviously it's gone you know yeah, yeah. Like, that's how popular it is and i know you can buy cuddly you can go into game and buy plushies and like other various things yeah and um yeah, I kind of see your point. I'm just wondering whether it's just done enough because it's. I don't. I'm kind of with Squiggy on the whole tower defense shite <laughs> going on. To be honest, and I'm trying to think what made that original. I I don't know if I can really. I know. What? I mean, my, I, it's an argument that my I have no idea what your hold up on tower defense is here. No, <laughs> just that it's. I don't know if it's like that made that much of a difference in the market, other than it popularized the. Apart from, you know, being PopCat's most successful gang. Yeah, but how... Pop who are the kings of... Well, one of the kings of casual. I mean, I guess the argument is my mum plays it. And yeah. She it <laughs> oh, like, gee, yeah, that's not had much of an impact. Oh, wait. My mum does play it. She plays on Kindle, <laughs> which is not even, like, the point of a Kindle. It's not the point. Um, I don't know. It's a difficult one. I actually am a little struggling with this week. Um, yeah, I'm sort of in the... I get, like, I get what you mean, Slazo about it but I don't know it's I'm not I'm not just saying this so you don't get number 50 I'm really not by the way this isn't like I'm honestly being completely honest I'm not saying this because of that I'm honestly flabbergasted you've not played it this is like you having oh wait you've not played Minecraft <laughs> no don't be silly I don't know it's coming it's uh, it's an awkward not, one <laughs> it's true <pretty> successful <laughs> it is it's successful a- but so many millions, it's won countless awards. Mm, but still. <laughs> we can talk about the second one, that didn't happen, but the first one. <laughs> so you're nominating the second one in that case, straight no. to the foot. Jesus, no. <laughs> I don't know, like, I get what you mean about, like, tower defence. Like, obviously building towers to defend yes. your sort of base and stuff, but... Like I know you say Space Invaders is a shoot 'em up. This is just me going back to Space Invaders, and it is, and it is. But you still have those towers in front to block it. No. So in a way, you've got those little blocks. It's a block defense game. It's no. That's no. I would. I can't speak because I'm flabbergasted how anyone could even begin to think that. It's the basis of it, isn't it? No, it's the not. Other- One's a shmup, one's tower defense. They're totally different genres. You do totally different things. Tower defense is about resource management and planning things. Shmup is about shooting aliens and not getting shot. But what is the aim of your resource management at the end of the day? Like To win, to kill all the enemies. To stop them from getting to that's you. In, shoot. in fact, that's the same as in a whole ton of genres. Don't die, win. And uh, you got anything else to add, Laura? <laughs> oh, Slazo, risking it all <laughs> on this one. What a bold move, lad. Not an entirely safe bet, but apparently neither of you have played. Oh, have no, you I played? played no, okay. I, I have you, what are your thoughts on the actual game? You, I know Squiggy hasn't played oh, it. Because my actual thought on the actual game, it's really fun. It's really addictive, and okay. I've probably lost too much time to it. Um, I I'd never really thought of it as anything that was groundbreaking. I think it's simple fun, but some of the best games are just I'll simple fun. That's game that your mother plays. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, and that's the thing. Uh, I kind of res- I respect the series. I'm a fan of the series, as I've said. Of like, you know, because I went into Garden yeah. Warfare and I think it was really great, and I love the style and the animation. And there's even actually kids books on it, by the way, because they all my recommended Amazon list because I ordered one. I didn't know that one. I must yeah, they do kids books and they do coloring books. I think. Nice. Okay, to be um, fair, everything is coloring books. Yeah, sense. what isn't? Um, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry. And um, yeah, I kind of enjoyed the game. I'm just trying to think where it goes in my terms of is it a top 50 game like I'm not going to deny I don't enjoy it Slazer. like like literally okay. but I can't just say I enjoy a game to be top like otherwise I'd be like here sitting here with a Saints Row flag every week which I'm stopped doing guys for now uh, yeah. yeah. for now 
I would say, like, part of the... It's kind of case that Tower Defense is usually a quite complicated genre. Yeah, Plants vs. Zombies is one that has appealed to multiple generations. The fact that, you, as I said, you're just as likely to see a parent playing it as you are a child. Yeah. So, um, but my mum does play a lot of them sort of games, and I was the one who set her up on it. It's not like she stumbled into it. That's fair, but you recommended Plants vs. Zombies because it's an easy and simple game for her to get into, right? Um... Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know like how she picks games, obviously, but the point um, is... No, she, just, of... she likes Bejeweled and stuff. Yeah, and it's kind of that kind of casual appeal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've yeah. definitely risked it all on this one, Slazer. Um, I've got nothing else to add. Laura, have you got anything else to add? No. Slazer, have you got anything... I feel I've entirely made my case, and if you try and compare it to Space Invaders again, I will scream. But you're not playing a horror. This is like—is this like your horror? Me comparing to Space Invaders, going back to the. Uh, my horror is like... you not understanding fundamental genre differences. <laughs> I understand it. I just. Do you? <laughs> I, I I do, but I would still like. I would class. This tower defense as, Space Invaders, but more tactical. Not, no. That's what our class it does because it, I just would because that's my that's my opinion. But yeah, should we go to a vote? I mean, I'm game. <laughs> well, you're game. You're going to vote yes. We'll rule you out straight away. So they just voted yes, surprisingly. Um, Laura, I really do like the series, which is what's pissing me off because <clears throat> I don't like rejecting things I like. <laughs> Sorry, that's a weird sentence. <laughs> Go away, thing I like. Um, but um... Go it's away, had more of an impact away. than half of the games on this list. I'm thinking. I'm gonna vote yes. Reluctantly, <laughs> I'm doing it for you, pea shooter. I'm doing it for you. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm voting. I'm voting yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what I vote, but I was going to vote no. Yeah, I assumed as much. Yeah, and it's not. It's like this. I know you said how, like how much it's done for the genre, but my first experience of Plants vs. Zombies, my first experience of Plants vs. Zombies was Garden Warfare. Okay. And that's the thing. Like to be honest, I thought you were nominating that one at first, and I was like, "What Jesus, are you?" No. And I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I mean. Like. I, I un- like I understand what you mean, but for me, I don't think it's a top fifty game. I think there's other games more deserving. But you've not played it. No, but which that's is what clearly I clearly mean. an effect in this case. No, but I think there's other games more deserving. Maybe not a whatever you call it, tower defense, tower collapse. Thing. Whatever. I... Oh my god. But yeah, I, I think there's I think there's more influential games than that. But that's my opinion. But it's there anyway. So we now have fifty in our list. Plants vs Zombie made it in there. Um. Yeah, so next week, whoever's going to be on the podcast are going to, well, we're going to not decimate the list. We're going to go through it, maybe one game per week. I, maybe One game per week? Jesus Christ, you're... <laughs> no, like, like, if we can think of games, if someone's got a one to take off, we'll do it. But oh we'll God. we'll work all that out. We'll work all the logistics We'll work out all the kinks. All you need to know for now, kids, is your boy Slazo did it. No failed games. Somehow. And the 50th spot is mine. Somehow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this has been episode 67 of the Party Chat Podcast. It's been mostly a pleasure. Um, it's been amazing, mate. It's been amazing. It's been mostly a pleasure. So yeah, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week for episode 68. Bye. <laughs>